How's it going guys? This is Garrett. I'm going to show you guys how to set up RetroArch to play Sledstorm on your PC. So first thing we need to do is download RetroArch. So all the links for everything that I get, I'm get, i going to say to download is going to be in the description for you guys. So first, at RetroArch, uh, download whatever platform you need for your PC or laptop. Apparently you can do Android and iOS as well. And once you have downloaded that, we're going to head over to the resources tab on uh, speedrun.com for Sledstorm. And we're going to download the emulator bin file and the ROM files for the game. Once all of that is downloaded into your downloader folder, we can uh, start installing RetroArch. This window is going to pop up, so next. Click to accept the terms of license agreement, next. And then we're going to change the location because uh, where it wants to save it is a really far ways away. So where we're going to save it, I'm going to go to this PC and then I'm going to go to my documents and I'm going to save it here. Next. You do not have to select the direct X. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Next and install. Now that it's finished installing, we just click finished. And RetroArch should automatically open up but we are going to go ahead and close it for now. And we're going to go back to the file location of RetroArch, and we are going to open up our downloads as well. This is where we're going to cut and paste the bin file and the ROM file. So first we're gonna cut the bin file and we're gonna place it inside the system folder. Once we've done that, we're going to cut the ROM files and we're going to place it inside the RetroArch folder itself. It doesn't matter where it goes. Just paste it in there. And that's all we need to do for that. So we can close that, close our downloads and boot up RetroArch. Now, as you saw, a bunch of those popped up that was I have a PlayStation 2 controller plugged in and it'll auto assign uh, binds for the controller it does a really good job of it and I'll show you how to change it if it doesn't work out for you guys so first thing we're going to do is uh, load a core so I'm going to use my controller to navigate from now on so load a core and we go to download a core so it's going to fetch all the core lists for us all right, now that we have all the cores up, we can just type S. We'll just type in Sony here and press enter to take us to the Sony cores. And the one we're going to use, or the one that works best for me, is the PC SX Rearmed. So we'll select that and we'll go back. Now, if you don't have a controller, you can use your keyboard with uh, just the arrow keys and pressing enter and using the back space to go back to the menus. So now we're going to load content, which is where we're going to load the game. So go to start directory, C, and then for me, I have to go down to user, and then my name, and then go to documents, and then find the RetroArch folder, which happens to be right here and then go all the way down to the ROM file and then click the IMG file. And there we go. We got Sledstorm on PC. Now I'm gonna go through a couple settings for you guys. Let's get to the main menu first. So first things, 
first we're going to click command and then menu toggle and then now we're going to go back to the main menu here and we're going to go to settings so these are all these settings here are not mandatory but this is what i use um so first things we're going to go to input and keep it on late for pull type behavior and what we're going to do if you ever have a situation in which your controller is not working properly go down to your ports one binds and make sure it's on whatever type of controller you have so i have analog as well so i'll change it to retropad with the analog and then make sure it's showing uh your device index and then you can go in here and change all of the binds individually so if i want to change what my x button is i would just press enter on my keyboard and then press x on my controller and I can go through all of these if I'd like now on to the hotkey binds which I find the um, the coolest thing about RetroArch is that there's so many hotkey binds for to do all sorts of crazy stuff like you can actually fast forward the game you can uh, slow-mo it and reverse it as well um, but my favorite thing is the save states that you can create by using your controller as save states so it makes it really easy to practice a specific shortcut or a skip within the game so what i use for load state is um r3 which is clicking the right thumbstick in so to change that i'm going to press enter and actually yeah, for the load state is going to be L3, my bad. And then for save state, I use R3. So press enter and then press R3 on my controller. And for any of these, if you want to take away any of these slots, you just press delete on your keyboard and it'll take, take out. So if I don't want the fast forward toggle, I could just go over it and press delete and I'll get rid of it. But I want to keep it, so I'm gonna press enter and space bar again. So you can go through all these and customize them the way you want. I'm not gonna go into detail on what everything does. You can kind of get the point, it takes a screenshot here, you know, all that fun stuff. Another thing that I'm going to change is the, biggest thing I change is the menu toggle you can change it to a controller bind. So what I use is I press down on my thumbstick, on my right thumbstick. So I can quickly access the main menu if I need to. So once that's done, yeah, you can go through all these and customize them as much as you want, which I highly recommend. I spend a long, long time setting mine up, but let's go back and I'll show you something else that's important is go to user interface. Uh, what I change is I turn off the don't run in the background. So if I'm ever um, clicking off of RetroArch, the game will not pause. So I will turn that off. And you can also have it where uh, if you open up the menu, the game will continue to run. You can turn that off as well. See it starts running again, but I prefer to have it on the menu that i stay in the most is the quick menu so if you're at main menu then go to quick menu and this is where you can change your slots for your save states after i've made any big changes uh, just in case i go to menu and then i go to configuration file and then go to save current configuration and that just reassures that all the changes i made to my inputs and hotkeys will all be saved also, if you want to have the program start in full screen mode, you would just go to settings, video, full screen mode, and uh, turn on start in full screen mode. Make sure you turn off the windowed full screen mode. Also in the video tab, if you want to change the aspect ratio, you go to scaling, 
and aspect ratio and you can change it to whatever you prefer. I just wanted to show you guys a quick example of save states in action. So I'm here on Eagle Ridge and I'm just going to set up a save state before two really major shortcuts. So save state here and I can practice the boulder clip and the rock climb as many times as I please. So now I can just press L3 and attempt it again and again. So that's what I love about these save states. All right, that's about it, guys. Um, there is a lot of settings and customizations you can do in RetroArch, and I highly recommend you guys uh, tinkering around with that kind of stuff. But I was just covering on how to get it started so you can actually play the game. But the uh, thing to note, if you're looking to speedrun the championship modes, like the Open Mountain Championship, it has to be on console because uh, emulators uh, have an unfair advantage of load times. So that's if you guys are looking to do that. But all the other categories are, there's plenty of other categories that you can use with emulator because it's timed with uh, in-game time. But with, uh, with the championship modes, it's timed with real time. So yeah, I hope this video helps you guys out. I'm no expert on this emulator, but if you have any issues you run into, uh, just join the Sledstorm Discord and ask there, and either I or someone else will be able to help you. Good luck on the runs, and I'll see you on the slopes. Peace.